I want to talk about working, working life. Um, a little bit about myself. I have about um, 20 years of working experience at NYSC. And um, probably like you guys as well, I, in my formative years, secondary school and university education uh, to postgrad, I did not find it difficult to pass exams as well. So I'm sure I'm probably talking to probably all of you guys as well. So I consider myself like a new book, in quote. And, <laughs> and, I, and I entered. But it was a lot of issues and a lot of um, side steps that could have been avoided over the years. And I wanted to share a bit of it with you guys so we can understand maybe some dynamics in the workplace at the end of this. Um, so I'm working, uh, doing my NYC career um, with one of, one of uh, Nigeria's uh, liquefied natural gas uh, business ventures with uh, the JVs of the Shells and the Chevrons and uh, the Mobiles as Nigeria that I just gave my name to the MD and I resumed. So obviously before the um, NYC concluded, the big man left the administration. So I had to walk out of the door. <laughs> but very interesting though, very interesting, we were four. Lucky enough to serve in Lagos at that time, lucky because it was supposed to be a very, very interestingly good place to start your career. And two of us were retained. I wasn't, of course, because I mean, I just went there with the swag of, I know Nigeria's number four man, so there's no problem. And I left as he left as well. But two were retained. And these guys, after discussions, really did not know people that matter like that, but they were retained. So it set me thinking, but not that deeply. I was not worried. So, of course, I had to test myself with the oil companies, uh, the big boys, uh, upstream, downstream, and um, it was a case of uh, going to somewhere that my mom did not like and also taking um, a job in one of these big new generation banks in Nigeria. It was in Lagos, so obviously my mom was okay with it and um, it was not flying over water. It wasn't so bad, so I decided to take that role as well. I spent 18 months in that job. Um, we did a very fancy, um, a very fancy workshop training session, very rigorous, for two, three months, I think. No, no, 10 weeks, that's two and a half months. And I was given a certificate as the best student in the class. So here I am, an engineer, and we look at people um, in the class, ICANN people, all these business admin, all these business leaders, aspiring business leaders. And an engineer goes to get the first prize. Obviously, it was a lot of cram work. Um, there are many things I did not know. It was a lot of cram work, it was a lot of uh, trying to compete, as usual. But I was given that accolade. And then, um, rightly or wrongly, um, a VP for e-banking took a liking to me and said I must work in his department. So I ended up not working in IT, uh, core IT. But the banking wasn't so bad. It was some nice things going on. And then another VP said I should move to um, strategic planning and research, which is just enough fancy word for free, sorry, for writing speeches for CEO and everything. And I was also training around the country. So I came, um, after 18 months, I came back to the HQ on a Monday. Um, very, very uh, boisterous, trying to tell my colleagues about what happened and what did not happen. Then I, in my new department, and I was told that I had to resign with a lot of other people as well. And by the way, the people that actually um, did the, what's it called, the compilation of the names were actually in my new department, strategic planning and research. So there was a disconnect. These were guys with first class and all these fancy whatever. And I was thinking, did they not like me? Did they feel threatened or whatever? So I had to resign again. The good thing though was that the beautiful ladies in the bank then all gave me a hug as I was leaving. <laughs> so, uh, um, of course, I was lucky enough to get another job uh, in another new generation bank. Excellent time, six months, I had to leave again. But this time, this time, this time, I, 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 I left on my own terms. So, so I, um, I um, moved to a multinational um, telco equipment manufacturing uh, company um, by stroke of luck. And I will also relate it to what I have planned to share with you guys as well today because um, I worked in Nitel accounts when I was in e-banking, transferring funds, uh, both funds and also um, LBX files in, um, 
soft copy to monitoring bank CBN and all these things and I had a very good right to say but I'm an, I'm, a, I'm an engineer why am I doing all this work of transferring funds with treasury transferring funds by, via dial up and all this and that was the closest thing I had to do with IT but I still stuck with it and I gave my best and it was in my resume NITEL account all these fancy things you know and that was that phrase that got me noticed in my next job with the um, telco OEM giant uh, global telco OEM giant telco I'm sorry NITEL account so my manager at the time who was hiring me was now what what do you do for NITEL account I said no I wasn't working for NITEL it was just NITEL account and then you know based on that we now discussed and everything and I'm not lucky to get hired I worked there for about 12 and a half 13 years um, I was fortunate uh, enough now I know I'm fortunate you know I was then I was fortunate enough to work in um, many many countries uh, globally and um, fortunate to change jobs like seven times in 13 years it was very good very groovy um, but what I will tell you for you to hold is that um, in the last five years we introduced a global program uh, to show employee recognition if you're doing very well 1.5 billion as we see and um, of course Nigeria I think we're number seven they're about like 189 190 um, billion a million people but what I want you guys to know basically is this slide what do these seven billion people do assuming it's seven billion we have 1.7 billion that work in services like the services industry we have 1.4 billion that work in agriculture and we have 80 800 million people who do industrial jobs so basically um, of course, we have 400 million who are entrepreneurs, so you might just want to hold that one in your left hand if you write with your right and vice versa. So if you look at this, um, by the time we add 1.7 plus 1.4 plus 800, we're looking basically at about 3.9 billion. And if you now um, matrix it with 7 billion, it's basically around 1 to 2. So basically, in a world of 7 billion people, we have at least one out of two people working. So we're in very good company here, even if you're not entrepreneurs yet. We're in very good companies if you're either working or you're about to work. So what I'm trying to say with this slide is that you will, you will work at a point in your life, one way or the other anyway. So it's very good for us to have this discussion. I wanted to talk a little bit about what work is. Um, what is work, basically? Um, if you look at the dictionary, it's a noun. It's also a verb. Um, it's a noun because you can look at it as a task, basically, um, and, and so you can look at it in, 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 in finite ways. And it's a verb as well because, you know, it's, it's an action. So as a doing word, you can probably relate to that as well. But the big, the big Style Dictionary says that a job is something done to earn money. Simple. And I like that, 100%. It's something that you do to earn money. Um, I'll come back to it shortly, but just for the benefit of the geeks here, I <laughs> took a look at the definition of work scientifically. Obviously, is work equals to the force uh, multiplied by the displacement of the object as well. So obviously, this poor man here holding this weight stationary is not doing any work. It's not doing any work. There's no displacement, and so um, that's just how it is. Work equals FD. So, so, so basically, whether or not you're working as a geek, um, a smaller job. Whether or not you're working, shoveling sand or anything, a blue collar job, whether or not you get to the uh, robotics, um, now take the um, function of um, human reasoning to do good and bad things, hopefully not. Whether or not you wear a red tie, you're still just um, a worker. And the job is something done to earn money. I'm not here to postulate about mass loose laws to say that. Um, the first one uh, level of basic essential needs and then to the higher ones of self-esteem and self-actualization. But I'm here to talk about work, do work to earn money. So basically, you can take it as basic needs, you can take it as self-esteem, you can take it as self-actualization, anything, safety, it doesn't matter. Moving on to the next slide, it's about networking skills. I think this is, um, see, this is very, very important, guys. Um, we have people that really don't, that are very shy, to talk. There are people who really, you know, will probably be lost in a crowd. Um, it is not a bad thing, but if it is a weakness that you have, then it is time to improve on it as well. You need to be very bold. If you know what it is that you're saying, then there will be no problem. You'll be shy, 
but she definitely will pass over your behavior across. It's very, very important to develop network, net, net, networking skills. You may start by initiating discussion with your co-colleagues. At least, I mean, in the working life, you spend about 12 hours every day at work anyway. So she'll be comfortable with the next person. So if you feel that you know up to him or her, or more than him or her, then show it. That begins to, you know, um, improve, improve your engaging skills 100%. It's very important to be able to master the art of small talk, you know. It's, when networking, it's very important to listen attentively because you don't know who you're talking to. You don't know uh, what questions or how he or she is probing. It's very important as well, such that um, you're talking, someone wants to hear you continue talking. It's very, very critical as well. I think that uh, the important thing is really to, you know, think, think people, not positions, but you can also flip it around though. Because if you now sit down and start talking to an engineer up and down and your person on your level is talking to a VP, and the person is really like your level as well, then you might want to understand that the VP probably have a bias for the person first of all. Pick your next tier. I think this is very, very the, the most important thing. Why you should relate with your peers as well. Talk to senior guys as well. Find out how they see things. Are they as good as, they, as, 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 as you think they are? Are there things you can learn from them? What's the worst that can happen? They at least know that this is a bright young button anyway. So it's a very good thing as well. So that's all I have to say on this slide. Network it's all the time, everywhere. It's not only in gardens like this. Everywhere uh, with different people. You're probably engaging in terms of speaking. You're engaging in terms of knowledge. You're engaging in terms of um, um, imparting knowledge as well or anything. It's, it's very important to, to network, guys. It's very, very super critical. And that's why my favorite social media, I don't do social media so much, it's, it's, it's LinkedIn actually. I like to read a lot of um, topics that people write there, both interesting things and sometimes nonsense things as well. It's very nice. Um, she's people's profile, you are, you are impressed and then you are also encouraged and talented as well. So it's also very important to, to, to develop networking skills uh, to move forward. Um, this is basically my favorite slide. It's, I call it human quotient. If you Google it or, or read anything about it, it it's, look at it in three different dimensions. You look at um, the cognitive side dimension, you look at the behavioral dimension, and then obviously you look at the interpersonal dimension. So I just try to look at, I flip it around and look at it in different ways. Self-reflective awareness, divergent thinking process, and emotional intelligence. Um, look at divergent thinking process, for instance. It's basically, of course, this human question, they actually use it when they're talking to, trying to gauge, like, your leadership index. Basically, when you're, like, assuming senior roles, 100%, but it's also good, good to know. Um, divergent thinking process, for instance. Uh, I asked someone to do a job for me. Please, can you go to uh, the gate and give this guy a note? to do something and then you take the note to the gate and the security man is not there and um, you bring it back to me. You've done what I asked you to do not so. Excellent. But I asked someone else to take a note to the gate and it goes to the gate, the security man is not there. Um, okay, he takes another note, writes down or writes down his cell number, that he needs to come and get this, um, leaves the next guy beside when the, the next um, um, shift is coming through so that you can check again and then have to give feedback in different dimensions. So this is basically iterative thinking. That is not, there is one simple solution to issues, but there are also more solutions to issues. This is what you need to know, and that is the level you need to get to, you know, uh, to begin to have a differential factor as well. Emotional intelligence, very, very important, is understanding your emotions, other people's emotions, and gauging how you will deal with them. To not prioritize what's on your schedule, but to prioritize your priorities. Sorry, but to schedule your priorities. So it's very important to, for us to um, set our priorities straight, know exactly what we're trying to achieve, and, 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 and that's it. This is about all I have, but I also thought to add this last slide. Um, we have spoken about, um, what's it called, people, uh, one and a half, one out of two people in the world being employees as well, Spoken about how, why we work and how to, to work. Uh, it's also important to understand the why as well. For me, personally, and this is me looking at Maslow very loosely, I think it's financial freedom. Because if you don't have to worry about money, which is also very subjective, what is my financial freedom is different from what is yours. But if you don't have to worry about money for the most part, it makes things a bit easier. You can do anything you want to do. Whether it is want to design some sort of... Uh, 
um, rocket that we go to the sun or whatever. At least you don't have to worry about money. So it's very, very important that we understand this thing. The reason why we're working is to make money. And the, when you make money, it's also to understand how to spend money wisely and how to make sure that you retain money as well. Very, very critical. Very, very critical. Of course, entrepreneurship. If you tell my boss that I'm saying this, I will deny because I'm a worker. But you need to consider how to own a business as well. Um, you need to consider that, yes, you can also fail a couple of times, many times as well, but you should, you should, you should keep on trying. And basically is to have an idea, have an idea, plan for it, go for it, reduce risk, reduce ambiguities, and see how it goes. You can, it might be a side hustle to start with, but it's very important, as a close friend always tell me, to consider entrepreneurship as well. Um, of course, to put all these things together, for me, it's very important for you to play on your strengths. Um, in the workplace or anywhere you are. You have weaknesses, you have strengths, but it's very important to improve on your strengths. I'm not saying you should ignore your weaknesses, but super critical to improve your strengths because that is how you can move forward more easily as well. And like um, Albert Einstein said again, everybody's a genius, but if you judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it's stupid. That's, it, it, the strength is not climbing trees, it's, it's, it's playing in waters, and if you cannot swim, you're probably dead as well. So it's good to play on your strengths 100% in any environment you're in. But the last but not the least, that if you guys don't hear anything today, but you should hear, please don't forget, is this one, HR management. I think this is my last slide, guys. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity. <laughs> Next lot. Next lot. So what are the factors that actually hasten or, uh, or um, quicken the break even or financial status? Because you see people working for 10 years and uh, see that they're not even working for like a year or two, like as in the, the financial business. So what are the factors that actually uh, improve the break even work financial status? Um, for me, it's a function of the opportunity that they present same along the way. It's a function of how ready you are to take advantage of this opportunity in terms of competence, in terms of expertise, networking, just getting ready 100% as well. I'll give you a story. Uh, in my last working organization, we were four that um, started up. Three boys and a girl. Yeah, we were boys and girls then, not, not man and woman. And um, after three years, one of, our, one of the chaps left to do an MBA in the UK. Excellent, excellent decision. He's never come back to his PhD um, in some business management things. We, I didn't understand then, no. now I understand. And um, he's not doing badly. UK standard, he can still go outside his door, get his fresh milk because he's paid for it. You know, nice environment, pay the heavy tax and mind the cold quietly. He's there. The second guy left the company after 10 years. And while at that point in time, I was a program manager. Not managing projects, but managing programs. Operational programs as well. He was a senior engineer. But he left because there was a senior engineer role in his domain in America, in the company in America. And he's left for about seven years now. Senior engineer. Nice house in um, Dallas-Fort Worth. Excellent house. When I go there, I don't have to stay in a hotel as proud as I am. Excellent house, nice family, um, mortgage all paid for as a Nigerian boy, quickly, you know, and he's living his life, you know. The lady left where I was working, um, very quick to jump into sales, was a key account manager, was a very big account, went to another company to be like a key account director, came back to our company, yeah, as a big key account manager for another big um, operator, left to Ghana, to be an expatriate there, living the royal life, you know? And I moved across seven rows and still exited with all my nice things. So you, what, what, what I'm trying to tell you is that it's different so for different folks. You can only do your best to prepare as much as possible. Get yourself ready for opportunities. Sometimes it's sheer luck. Sometimes you walk into a place to engage, someone likes your face, someone likes the, your opening remark, and someone feels that you have content or depth or quality. It happens like that. And I can still look back and say that um, I have people that, you know, um, left university like 20 years ago like I did as well. And I probably still as assistant professors now. That's what probably he doesn't want or he does want, I don't know. But it's different for different folk. But if you have a focus, if you have a goal, if you have an objective, 
If you have your sense of purpose, you can only strive for it by preparing yourself 100%. Even if you are losing your job, you could turn that to the positive thing. So him, coming from different jobs, entered and it made him to be where he is now with different skills. So other people would have lost their job and maybe they would have given up or just lose on the track. So we being positive would keep us on the track. Thank you. To understand that, um, yes, you're working in an organization. Um, yes, you have all the skills and the expertise. Yes, you are doing a good job. Yes, the organization is churning in millions, billions of dollars. Things are looking good and everything. Um, but you're just a number. You're just a start at the end of the day. Um, if you want to take decisions in terms of um, um, attrition, which is a nice fancy way to say layoff, it's just to look at your revenue and your cost of sales. Is the margin being, maximi being maximized or not? Um, which area? And you drill down to the numbers. So if the numbers is equal to maybe you're looking to save um, $100 million and it is down to 100 people, you will look for them. You will look for them. Um, that is in one side of your mind to understand that. The other side as well is that, I mean, if you feel that, you know, you have the, the skills, the competence to do things on your own by the side, you know, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, just something to first of all start with. Entrepreneurs, great entrepreneurs have said that, you know, they are forced, the first thing they tried their hands on was not actually what uh, was successful. So if you want to dip your hands into those waters as well, it's for you to have the self-consciousness, you know, to realize that I am not, you know, eating the time of a company that is paying my wages. I'm just utilizing and optimizing my time. Again, the limits of your conscience. It's up to you. Of course, common sense as well and wisdom. So.